Sumatra. So I'm very happy to see the people in Nauri uh, having a coalition like yourself, and which is a start, but we have to do a little bit further. I'm happy to see also the Hilal Committee. Besides the moon, to unite Muslims from the beginning of the holy months and the Eid, inshallah. I'll ask myself four questions, which I leave it to you, but if we we'll start to answer them, it will be another lecture. I, I've been to Malawi before, and uh, our first Qurbani in 1986 was in Malawi, before even Islam Islamic came here, and that's Sister Sharifa. She, she, is, she is the sister in the room. She is now in charge of Islamic life here. If you want to grab her for your knowledge, for uh, exchange information and training, she came willingly to help. And she is Malawi. Malawi? Sister Sharifa, just raise your hand to everybody. So, four questions for me. First of all, I believe that Malawi is a very rich country. It's not a poor country. I wouldn't believe that it's a poor country. Whoever tells you it's a poor country, I think somebody is fooling you. But he cannot fool you. The first question, who are we? Each one of us has to answer this question. Each organization, the identity. Then what are we doing? Why you are doing it? How are we? Four questions. If you want me to answer, this will be another very long talk. But if you write it, write it in brothers and secretary. Who are we? Who are we, really? It's very important to find our identity before we start doing any work. Are we Indian? Are we Pakistani? Are we Gujarati? Are we Memon? Are we Jibati? Are we Tabdili? Are we Sufi? Are we Brelwi? Are we Hanafi? Are we Shafi? Who are we? Prophet ﷺ never was one of this. He was a Muslim. He was not Hanafi, he was not Shafi, he was not Sufi, but he was the Prophet. So the companion. So the identity is very important to answer the question what are we doing in this country? In our country? I say our country. What are we doing? Are we doing, are we doing business? Fine. I don't know if it's halal. It's halal. Each one of you could be Abdurrahman and Afghan Matur. Or could be Afghan and Afghan and Matur. No problem. But what's next? What's next after that? Each one of the Quran of the Prophet was a community builder. Wherever the Muslim went to any place, they started civilization by the local people. And they kept the words in the local community. For the local community, with the local community. How are we doing it? And why we are we doing it? We are doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As well as to live a happy life, as well as to earn more money, and so on, so on, so on. Why we are we doing it? Because it's a mission. We are doing it because the Prophet Sallallahu said one day that he is eager to see any one of you and each one of you. Huh? Then Mustaq and Ahbab. Allah and Ahbab are the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by that and the Ashab. But Ahbab is the Nasr of the Nabi and the Mirab. You are my companions. You are not my beloved ones. My beloved ones is you. Or are you? The people who believe in him without seeing him. The act of each one of us here, you especially, is equivalent to the act of 50 Sahaba. This is the, the how, why, where is very important to try to clarify and to clear the intention. You just make it very brief. For, I'm very happy to look at Amra. And I want to know, uh, since I came from Egypt and to believe in pyramids, and I draw, I draw my pyramids. My pyramids. What is this? Any human being works hard, a 
as an action. Naturally. It's what Allah put in our hearts. Even the animals help one another. Even the birds help one another. Live is in our gene. Then it becomes the action. When there's a disaster, there's flood, there's cyclone, there's tsunami, there's war, there's displacement, there's refugees. The action. Then it becomes seasonal. <coughs> Ramadan, Turbani, uh, the bag for the school, school bags, so all this kind of uh, seasonal activity. Then it becomes traditional. We do it every, every year. I'm wrong, or right? Goes like this. Then we organize it. We make organization. Then we become professional. <clears throat> then we change it from organization to institution. Then become industrial. Where are we? Where are we? Very simple question, have a painful answer. Most of the Muslim charities global are stuck here. Between this and this. Between forming an organization, either a foundation owned by certain people, or organization which is run by certain groups and they cannot let go to the greater community. Professionalism is a, a struggle. Professionalism means efficiency, means accuracy, means good governance, means empowerment. This, this is professionalism. Professionalism is not saving money. Never was. Professionalism is not cutting corners. Never was at all. So, as I said, an institution, or, uh, the, when one moves from organization to institution, the ownership of the organization will come to the community, not you or your group or your community or your, or your uh, uh, family. It's owned by the community. The community chosen, the board members, the community chosen for you, the CEO, because you advertise. You don't pick up the phone and call people, come, I have a job for you. No, it's an organization or whatever. When I come back here to South Africa, sorry, I'm not going to go there. To Malawi. I love Malawi. Can you give me citizenship? Hold on. Anytime. So we move here to go here, but we become traditional again. Yeah, this is not we become traditional. So you have got tradition here, you have got tradition here. Painful. I've never been to Malawi, I've been to Nan before, and I've heard all these stories before. When it comes to our charity, because my money, I don't employ people, I don't accept. Your work is marvelous, but you will never grow. Don't accept it. You have to spend. When, when, when Musa was helping the daughter of Mawlana Shu'ayb, Mawlana Shu'ayb, Sayyidina Shu'ayb, alayhi salam, she told him, Daddy, employ him. He's a strong and faithful, I mean, the strength <laughs> of the knowledge, not only the physical power. If you want to employ me for a peanuts, I will not be able to work for you. If you want to get the organization to go from A to B to C to D, you have to invest in the people who are running the organization. That's why you know, no matter what you do in your business, may Allah help you. You employ the best people, but when it comes to charity, you don't employ people. And you cannot do it, and you'll never be able to do it. Tell you something, a 
in the first five years of Islamic faith, it was just voluntarism. Everybody was sitting on the desk for peanuts. But after that, we have to build the structure. We have to build departments. We have to invest in the people who come to take the money, to raise it from the public, or actually to deal with government. So really, cutting corners, spending money to not spending, investing money to build organization is a necessity. Why not? I, I have to stop it. Carry on. I told you 15 minutes, but I forgot. Okay. You see, uh, I'll, I'll just stop after, after this because if uh, we are in, in an era of Islamophobia, and there everybody is very well prepared, very well prepared. For what? To attack Islam, to attack Muslims, but especially the church. If we are not very well prepared to build an institution and stand up strong, we'll go with the wind. No matter what you have of money, money does not protect people. I have a saying called uh, connection is protection. I will stop now because I was ordered by His Majesty, the King, to speak for 15 minutes. And I'll take all the... When you ask me, please ask the difficult question. Don't be nice to me. Okay? Hammer me. I can take it. Okay? Hammer me, huh? Please. Please, tell them to hammer me. Jazakallah, Dr. Han. Jazakallah. Some powerful words there. I'm sure you could go on for the whole night. But... Uh, what we had decided was that tonight, I think it should be more about all of you that are here. And we want to hear from you because I think Dr. Hani is, as you've heard, an expert in getting all these charity organizations together in the UK. So the idea is that we will have a question and answer session. And as you've heard him, I'm not going to repeat what he just said, um, but he wants the difficult questions. So I'd like you to please um, grill him, ask him what you need, what you want, in terms of what you're doing. Amir is going to moderate the session, so I'm just going to hand over to him. Amir, every question I answer, you donate one million what? One million what? Do you have any questions or can I try as a first one?
challenge is not the wealth of who have, it is the vision, it's the drive, it's the investment in the community and in the organization and the coordination and communication and partnership. I am specialized in social work, not in crypto. I am faqih, social faqih, not, just, uh, not uh, theological faqih. You people could be imams or alana, it's not my business. I can make fatwa on the social work. Haram what we are doing from the social point of view. Why? Because duplication means drainage of resources. It becomes now not, not a farm, but fardu'ai. Cannot get the Islam before saying Ashadu Allah Allah Muhammad Rasulullah. Partnership, coordination, and communication at the time, it is farm. No matter who you are, no matter who is your background, no matter who is your ilm is, no matter who is your group is, Islam was never a divisive religion. So really, this is our challenge that we duplicate and we overspend and we don't have the impact. At the era of Islamophobia, radicalism and extremism, even some of the Muslim countries don't like charity work. They hate this kind of activity because you are building civil society organizations to strengthen the local community. So coordination, communication, not working, Building partnership is a farm. And you have the money to do it. You know what, Brother Sinan? Yeah. Hamad. And they give him the nickname, Muhammad Hamad. It's our ego. Al Halika. Al Halika. Tahlak al Deen, or Tahlak al Ras. This shaver. The shaver which shaves the deen is the nafs which prevents me from coordinating and communicating with my fellow organization and other organization. My logo is more important than the community itself. We have to be the first and strong. We have to do it ourselves independently, be strong. Okay? All this is wrong. And this, even all the Muslim organizations are. What of the Muslim organizations are coordinating and communicating the world. They give it a coordination because in America there's something called interaction. 300 organizations. In Britain there's something called bond. 400 organizations. In the United Nations there's two other organizations. One of them called SCHR, the top 13 global organizations sitting with one another every six months coordinate and to plan. In Switzerland, there's another organization called ECFA, 89 organization. And we don't have any coordination of communication. We are living on a cuckoo island, where the cuckoo bird has already left the island. But we're insisting to call it cuckoo island, and we're insisting to live there. For me, socially, Maulana, I'm going to give a fatwa. It is social fatwa. For me, it's haram, not even makruh. Because the money you have, are you a businessman? You spend your own family money. If it becomes a cab for salaka, it's not your money anymore. Because it's haqq ma'room, nisa'ir wa ma'room. It's like uh, Allah's given right to the poor. So once you say this is a cab, salaka, you don't spend it your way. You spend it the community way. To empower the community build the community and to connect and network. Your organization, which is our Amr, has to have a secretariat. Has to have a secretariat. And we have to build the secretariat and spend money on it. It cannot be just ad hoc. It has to be a proper organization, because we need it. Just to answer your question, Abud, Shukr. Any other questions?
uh, if we take any concentration here to show all of this. Uh, my question is that uh, Muslim organizations, whether they are in Malawi or in Africa or in the UK, worldwide, they are facing new challenges. Facing new, facing new challenges. Challenges, yes. We have what we call, uh, they call, New World Order. And that New World Order has produced a lot of disciplines which are affecting the work of uh, Muslim organizations. One of them is uh, money laundering uh, uh, laws in all countries, which is prevent the organization to take the money from the wealthy people and generally from the, uh, the privileged through their services. What are, according to your opinion, the measures that uh, Muslim organizations can take so as to make sure that they have continuity in doing their services? Well, uh, the, the risking which is a big problem affecting all the organizations, including the non-Muslim organizations as well. Uh, organizations like Oxfam, Accepted Children, and others having some problem, problems with actually even money transfer, especially to conflict zones, to Syria, to Yemen, and to the third one, Syria, Yemen, and uh, no, uh, Syria, Yemen, anyway, uh, the conflict zones, the conflict zones. This is actually cross border. It's more difficult for the Muslim Shires. Okay. There's another organization which you need to know, I think that, which is listing people. The list, each country has a list of extremists, of radicalism, and of terrorism including the United Nations. Britain has one, America has one. But World Check, or Thompson Project, as we call it, has three million people on its list. My advice to all of you to join and check your names. Because sometimes a man does not come to you because your name on the World Check and you want the bank. Look at the board members, look at the company, board or the organization board and find A or B or C on the list, they will never transfer them. And sometimes these names are being put haphazardly because just some worker in the world in the, in the world check just uh, read something bad about yourself, which is not true. You don't carry on. You have to fight back to clear your name. It's one of the first step of trying to ease the money transfer from A to B to C to D. Number one. Number two, it is sometimes we mix the message of humanitarian work with the Dawah message or with actually another message which has nothing to do with humanitarian work. This scares people to start to put you into another list, the think tank group, other think tank group. So this kind of me championing humanitarian organization, I have to understand what are the humanitarian principles, okay? That actually I should follow. It's not my own principles, because we have been governed by the global humanitarian principles. There's a lot of standards, like sphere standards, and other, and other, and other. We have to follow this. Number three, what images you put on our Facebook, on our Twitter, and what messages you put there, Either to scare people or let people to think twice about yourself or myself or <coughs> ourselves. All these measures will let the regulator to be either scared <coughs> of you or say that you are okay because you are not making the law has been already made. Whether we like it or not. Actually, whether it's just uh, 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 regulation or unjust regulation. Other thing is very important whenever you go to a conflict zone, whether it's Gaza or Yemen or uh, Syria or others, be careful. First of all, not to go first. Because I've been watched by many, 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 many intelligence and security individuals. It's number one. And be careful if you are there, even whom you talk to, whom you take photographs with. And 
what then what you put on your Facebook or your Twitter or your actually uh, social media. Be extremely careful in this area. This is how the people think. You must be extremely anxious doing something, not, nothing wrong. But the people look at it in different ways. So all these measures you have to look at it. Number four, in our organization we have to start producing policies. Policies towards how to treat the children, how to treat women, how, 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 policy for counter extremism, to, to counter the extremism and that. All these policies, the bank will ask you about it, or the big organization will ask you about it. If you don't have the policy, I think it may be Sharif, because they have all these policies, it become very bureaucratic nowadays, because I, I start hating them. Because <laughs> they become very bureaucratic of all these policies, because this is required. You are not alone. This area that we are working in is very well controlled by security and intelligence. I give you an example of how they made a forensic, forensic audit. Anyone accountant here? Any accountant? Forensic audit? Huh? Yeah, forensic audit? Yeah. Well, with forensic audit, they went as far as to know the, the, the board members of the company that you are buying from from it in South Africa, not in London. Why you are buying from this company? And look at the board of the company, the consistency of who are they? How you made a decision in South Africa or Malawi to buy from this company, not this company. But actually how to take the decision in London or in New York or in Rome. You see, and who is doing it? Accountants, financial uh, individual plus security in the company. And this has been done to, to you, to Islamic Khalif, by the British government because they want to clear their name. It costs them a lot of money, not to mix it, the figure, to prove that they are innocent. But not every government will do it. But this is how the system is working. <coughs> Number five, you want to be protected, brother? You have to connect. When we, in the 90s, the early 90s, we started to open our doors to anybody to come. We're employing Muslims and non-Muslims from 89, 90. Okay? They will start to attend the conferences. They will start to be seen that we're attending conferences and meetings. We don't miss the meeting, the coordination meeting. You have many coordination meetings here. World Football Club, UNHCR, uh, UNOCHA. Uh, maybe WHO, I don't know, whatever, something with the AIDS, uh, uh, UN AIDS. You have to attend these meetings, whether you like it or not. Whether you like it or not, it is a must. It's another fatwa. Because I'm, I'm a social movie, yeah. <laughs> but not like you. I'm a social movie. It's haram that you don't attend the meeting. Haram from social point of view. You must. Even if you don't know the discussion, you will live. Then you can make the discussion. It took me three years to listen. So I did all this meeting in the first night to listen. And after three years, I started to talk. Then I started to throw opinion. Then I started to throw papers. Then I started to, start to lead. It's a process. If you don't connect, you cannot protect yourself. Are you happy? Yeah. Thank you. The check, please. <laughs> check. <laughs> Nothing for free. <laughs> It goes in the account number one. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Leave Allah alone. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Assalamualaikum. I think the first question I had already tackled how we engage with the civil formal, formal civil society. Uh, we have a challenge, obviously, in Malawi, and I think <coughs> many other countries. Where our organizations do not interact with former civil society and other organizations like you mentioned, <coughs> like WFP and UN, UNO and all other uh, coordination bodies. Um, now obviously in, in, in Europe and the UK, things have been more because the organizations are more and proactive. How did that evolution take place? What happened to those steps that were made to encourage them, especially from, a, from an entering perspective as, a, as, as the forum that you created? Uh, how did you encourage organizations to take a more proactive role with former civil society? 
to send the parallel transfer. Okay. So for this, it does not happen overnight. It's a process, long term process. In the 1994 95, we wanted to hire a consultant to get us some money from the European Union. Okay? This is how it started. And the consultant came and interviewed me. And what he said, I want to see your CV. I said, why? I give you the program of the organization. And I said, no, no, no. We want to see who is taking the decision. Is he qualified to take the decision or not? Is he qualified to take the decision or not? Because when you apply, you take government fund. When you apply, you take government fund. We want to see you first. Because you are at the top of the balance of the firm. See how they look at you? They look at your structure. Who is employed there? What is their background? They look at your board, the trustees. Who are they? What is their background? Doing this, you have to open the door. What I've been doing, I've been promoting this for the last 25 years. When I was in Islamic Reef and even after I left the Islamic Reef. And one of, one of the reasons to leave Islamic Reef is why the fact was successful, as you understand. Very safe, secure place for me. Okay? But I took the risk to start to do these small organizations. The organization I, I run, uh, $200,000, one is $100,000, the other one is 100000 pounds. And to struggle to collect them. I'm not fundraising for you. No, no way. But I'm saying that you have to get in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kulu alayhi wa ta'ala. Get in. Get in. Why are you scared? We're standing outside. Have your seat. Don't be invited. Have your seat. If you don't knock the door, don't open the door, you don't have a seat, no safe for you. And this will take time. Whom you know, how you get there, and what you produce. One of the failures of us, uh, Brother uh, Abbas, that's right? Abbas. That we don't invest in research. Research. The Ummah of Ikhra does not believe in research. What is this? What is this contradiction between the, the basic teaching of Islam and the implementation of Muslims? We don't have time to think, we don't have to produce and build think tanks. Who is classifying us, Brother Abbas and the others? People are sitting behind door, closed doors. I'm telling you a story about this. I tell you one story. We said it to be in jail for 24 hours. I was uh, traveling to one of the world's uh, countries. And by the security officer, he said, uh, he started reading what's being written. I said, this is wrong. I said, this is what has been written in the open-ended uh, uh, media. Then he discovered that this should be written about me by security department somewhere, without mentioning, without going to ask anyone. Okay? I said, on that day, on that day First of all, I did not visit these countries for the last six or seven years. So this is what they wrote. You know, on the day, they said, I have visited such a country to train such organizations or people. On the same day, I was in the embassy of the individual who wrote the report taking my visa. A security officer sitting somewhere, and just, he looked at you on the, on, on, on the list, and they tell me something. Write something about it. You don't know what they are writing. But if you connect, how will we save Islamic League in 2001? Because we have opened the door 10 years before 2001. So on the hand closed door, they were discussing issues in our absence and they were defending you. This is how you have a strategy for opening the door, then promoting the process. They promote, and inside this organization, whether you and or others, there's people who want to help you, but you don't know how to reach it. It takes time. 
and it takes not only time, it takes money to invest in it. I finished the first question. Second uh, one. The second one was uh, we hear again and again how the large NGOs have got uh, uh, top salaries for their uh, senior executive. Uh, uh, like recently, Save the Children yeah, and Radio yeah, yeah, were yeah. highlighted. I how do you, recon especially with Islamic organizations, how do you reconcile using Islamic funds to pay top salaries? Okay. Uh, should, not, should, they not be, they should, should, should there not be a reconciling that? Because how do you justify it? I don't know what you mean by reconciling. What do you mean by reconciling? How do you how do you figure it? How do you how do you, how do you justify? How do you justify? It? Okay. Because um, I don't speak Urdu. I don't speak English. <laughs> let, let me repackage the question. Yeah, yeah. I I got I got it. <laughs> you want the service? You employ me. You don't want the service? Leave me alone. As simple as this. As simple as this. I don't ask you to get somebody to understand the pound. That's why the big scandal about one transition is the CEO is paid 200,000 pounds plus, plus, plus other facilities. Okay? Charity work now, in, in global, or global sense, or MTA work, become a profession. A profession. A specialization. Because if you have qualified people, you'll be able to get from the governments the 5 million, 10 million, 20 million, 50 million. <laughs> I'll give you some examples. <laughs> In Yemen, a few years ago, the CEO of Islamic Leaf wanted me to introduce him to the representative of WFP in Geneva. And the first ask said, I want 100 million. She told him, it's just starting the 10. See the figures? See the figures? They start with the 10. Because you give him the food, which is equivalent to the 10 million. Because he gave you the food, and this, this, this money has been given by government, which most of them are Muslim government. And they don't tap into that. And I'm not sure how they can spend to 40 million from, from, uh, from WFP in, in Yemen at that, at that time. Even up till now, the largest agent who's, who's uh, distributing aid material. In Yemen is dead because they have built the structure. If you want the millions, you invest in horses. You don't want the millions, plus send out up this option. It's your call. Okay. So second best thing is you build those individuals with, from within the organization. To let them have the mission and the vision and the spirit and the soul <coughs> and the cut in the salary. So you have a structure and the organization to capacity build all the individuals, the youngsters, and make them the future leaders. Instead of taking the 50, 100,000, they might take less. Because they have this feeling. And they'll be so happy to go to the millions on your table. This is a system, a big system, and they have to discover it. To be able to help the people that who claim that want to help. Otherwise, somebody else will take the money. And they will change their culture, their values, and maybe their religion as well. This is a challenge. What is it? Did I reconcile, brother? Is it clear? Or? The microphone is very dear to me. Yeah, he's, he's, he's Did I reconcile? He's, I'm, I'm talking about this language. No, it's fantastic. I think it's enlightening for all. I think. Uh, we have to think outside the box. We can, we oh, don't the box. need to have a box. <laughs> Which box? The box. <laughs> I'm not sure. The black box. <laughs> Any other questions? Some of the bank benches. Brothers Ben. Balani. Yes. One of the biggest challenges that you've um, highlighted is the lack of cooperation. That's it. And, um, it's definitely something that we face in Malawi amongst all the various charity bodies and institutions. In terms of, like you said, putting the egos aside yeah. and uniting with a common goal. What's the first step? And what did you do to be able to get the charities in the UK to get under one umbrella? How, how do we take that first step? Yeah. And what's the process right. from there? Exactly. First of all, 
when we start the Muslim Church Forum, we have about two dilemmas. Uh, and all this initiative came out from Islamic League in 2004, 5, 6, and 7. And uh, when we wanted to start something, first of all, you forgot your organization. When we started the Muslim Church Forum, Muslim Church Forum organization, bring all the Muslim churches together in the UK, the British Muslim Church. Okay? Because I just left the Islamic League, some organizations suspected me, very good people, that I'm making an umbrella to take over the whole sector in the UK. And they were dragging their feet for a year or two, but we proceed. Then they changed their mind and they came back. Okay, this kind of, oh, Hanif Banna is Islamic belief and make this umbrella, this for Islamic man, this kind of, you know, when I saw no masawa, alhamma fujura wa taqwa, but afla haman, zakka, but khaba man, jassa, but I can't get back to the most of the person. See, was that, that is you, this, this kind of soul, this grunge feeling of the competitiveness between you and your fellow, your fellow organization, other organization of brothers, why they should go first? This is number one. Let me give you a practical example. One was in South Lebanon in 2006, when we decided to make a food back for the displaced people from South Lebanon after the Israeli were invaded and was actually striking against the South. Six or seven organizations. We made the food pack with six logos. The box has six logos. The box, six logos. can you say it again please? Six logos. Not one logo. Six, six logos equal, equal in size and the color, <coughs> okay? The only difference is, if you paid $100,000, I give you what's equivalent to 100,000, the number of the 800,000, if I take, if I pay $10,000, I take the share of $10,000. This was the, this was done. So the logo of the small organization went to all the boxes. And this was 13 years ago. And the organizer was her organization, Islamic League. They did not make the logo bigger than the others. Okay? With the Humanitarian Forum, which is a new uh, platform, that I'm, I'm struggling to get the budget for it. The pay. Huh? The, whatever I call it. <laughs> well, you know how many people work on there? Three people. Two part time and two full time. And I am number four. And do struggle, and have two discs. So the three people alternate. You see? And this is how. When we made a big conference two years ago in London 2017, the second conference will be in October this year in Istanbul. You are most welcome to attend. We did not put our logo different to any other one. 35 partners. All logo are the same. All logo are the same. Even the Secretariat, which you provided, we did not call it the Secretariat of the Forum, the Secretariat of the Conference. And we were paying the salary from our budget. The only difference was that the main donor for the sponsor got their logos first, the same size. But no size bigger than any other size. And this will kill the ego of others. First, kill it in your heart. Third point is when you want to make a press release, don't be the first. You write it, then you send it to all the organizations for their opinion. And wait for a day or two or three, then every one of them said, said okay. And when you sign up, you sign all of them, not you. And this is the evil. Do a hustle nafs. Hasanas. A good many Mulanas here. Okay? Yes, brother? Ego and Dog. Can I can I add to the question? Yes, sir. Once you've created that platform of unity, how do you strike a balance between creating one agenda and allowing the other organizations to have their independence? They are independent. 
because we don't implement this organization, this umbrella is coordinating only, does not have the power to make any implementation. So no active program. No, you don't shoot them, we don't implement. One umbrella has been created in one country, and the first day we told them, what are you doing? It's not your job. You go and raise the money with the name of the organization, then you, you spend it yourself. You are a failure from day one. You got it? The coordinator does not implement. The connector does not implement. He connect, regulate, maybe support, guide, but does not implement. Yes, sir. Just drawing on what you just mentioned, the coordinate, the coordinate but not fundraise. But how do you sustain the network? The network itself? It is from the member organizations. <laughs> how, do, how, do you, how do you maintain the momentum? Yeah. Because normally what happens is initially when you start up a program, everybody's excited and they're paying and everything comes in. But after a little time, you have a problem with sustaining. I don't know, I don't know if you experience a similar situation yeah. I'm doing. So basically, you, 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 you have two options. If the membership fees are enough, it should be fine. If not, you take a permission from the board to fundraise for your program. Because in, in, the, in the case of Muslim Chairs Forum, we don't have the permission to fundraise. Because the board is actually on the members organization trying to cover the, the, the cost of the operation itself. Then after that we might get some sponsorship money from member organization or some other organization. It depends on you as a board whether to allow fundraising or not. But you should not, you should not, you should not implement. You only coordinate, cooperate, spread the message of partnership, make a capacity building program, and so on, but not to implement. In this organization we see in, in London, uh, Brother Abbas, Islamic Youth is a member, Muslim Hands is a member, and, uh, and that is a member, and Khair is a member, uh, I can't remember, oh. Human Appeal is a member, Human Reform, a lot of uh, about 17 organizations. See, and, and they actually, we cannot cross the line of implementing the program. Okay? Anybody else? On the stage. Oh, on the stage. Oh, it's very different. Uh, please, be, be first. Next. Molana. The Molana is the Molana syndrome. Doctor, you have obviously taken the forum direction where your passion lies in the guidance to, to form an umbrella body. I think that is what your main agenda is. You've gone through the phases of the pyramid. Malawians are very poor, although Malawi is a resourceful country. I think you also have highlighted that. From our point, and I think I will speak for many of us that are part of this, you know, we know that admin costs for organizations are very high. With local funding, it is difficult to do large-scale work without tapping into international funds. At times, we fear employing people because the international intellectual academic pool in Malawi is very small. Unlike the UK, where you put up an advert, you will get a thousand applications for the same job and you will be spoiled for choice. In Malawi, the international inter intellectual academic pool is small. I want to take this uh, conversation on a, to a different uh, point uh, to say that you know we are action people. Most of us that are here that are representing different organisations, although uh, we come from different camps, different uh, different backgrounds. We are action people and your horses, as you have said, right? With, and we have ideas and are no doubt that we are in the natural reaction and traditional stage that you've put up. Implementation is important, all right? But we can facilitate. So what I want to say is, obviously, you must be frustrated that at your age, 
you still feel that you could have done better. I still have it another 60 years to go. Yeah, but you still feel that you could have done better. Okay. Oh, you are with you on that. How can you, the question then comes in, after having given the background, is how can you source funding for Malawi and use us as an umbrella body which we can form towards, alternatively as individual organizations to help Malawians as a country. We did have that informal chat where we said that Malawians are very voiceless people and the organizations that are in the country, the admin costs are unreal. The first thing they buy, you know, and I will differ on you, they buy land cruisers, etc. And to, 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 to do their work, which none of us as an organization do. So I think uh, if you can guide us to say that you're coming here, how can we benefit so that you can source the funding for Malawi and uh, use us to implement that? Let me give you a practical example from Yemen, because you people are business minded, so you need practicality. We have a million farm in Yemen and in Indonesia, and look at China. They are made in Yemen, they are made out of, uh, I think, the top organizations. With small organizations. Without each of them, we go to more than 550 CBOs, they call it CBOs, community uh, based organizations. So, you and Oshia and Yemen were considering in the MTN Forum to do this on the ground, in the coordination and in the training and out. And when some fund comes, we can recommend some of the member organizations because they have been trained. If we don't build the body, we will not get the fund to do, uh, to do that. You are here in a unique situation in, in Malawi. You have got, as much as I heard, you are in your NCR, you have got your notch, you have got WFP, you are in FPA, what else? You are in AIDS. You are in AIDS, okay. You are in AIDS, anything else? Yes. Huh? You are in all the clubs here. Build yourself to convince those people to work with you. Those people have got a philosophy of thinking. Who is the secretariat of uh, AMRA? You said Bolivia. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> what I'm saying, what I'm saying, because we need to deal, to talk to somebody. It's number one. Number two, who is the membership of AMRA? Is AMRA or LX is registered in the, in, in, in the country? Or not? What is the policy and the procedures? Who is the project officer, the project manager, Amra? So why should I give you money when you don't have the structure? It goes like investment in the community. This is what we have done in different countries. All these forums, when they, when they do it, they invest in building the structure, then the money comes later on. Regarding to the four-wheel drive, I take you to Afghanistan, you come with me. Yeah. I take you to Pakistan, Kashmir, you come with me. I take you to Pakistan, you cannot drive there without four wheels and more in this country. It becomes luxury when you look at it from a distance. But it's impossible to come from Pakistan. Yes, sir. Do you go to Kashmir without four wheels? Do you go to Pakistan without four wheels? There's no roads. Take us to Somalia. I went to Somalia last Ramadan and we want to see the, the path of the, of, of, the, of the flooding that was going to the ocean. It's, 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 there's no road. No road between rocks and sand. How can you drive? And we drove for six hours this way and six hours back to go back to the east. Can you do it? It becomes the four wheels now is the luxury. It's something which is essential for us. In this certain area, you cannot, because there's no road. <coughs> there's no road to, to, to let you to drive the, the lower cars. Sometimes there's justification. But sometimes we don't, we have, don't have to overdo it. The examples for Yemen and also for Indonesia. The local organization managed to prove themselves <coughs> and to build the structure and to invest from their own money so the government is giving them as well as that that the UN is giving them. 
is good. Yes, sir. Yeah. At your disposal. No, 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 too, again. <laughs> again. You might as well leave the mic. I've been traveling with you four hours or six hours today. I I didn't have an opportunity to ask them because we were busy working on the student program. Uh, Doctor, you, you mentioned again and again that uh, you remember regarding membership based. Yeah. From, how do you how do you determine? You mentioned also that there were different types of organizations, different sizes of organizations. How do you determine the membership fees from different organizations? It depends on the income. Sometimes people draw with the income. The more income you have, the more membership fees you pay. Based on income. Yeah. Anybody else?
سواك سواك وانت ايوا لكن نسنا الحفظ من بعد ما قلت نرد قلت نسنا الملاوي انت حين ما يعني تخطط لمشروع الفقر يخطر ولا يمكن ان تقول لانسان تعال الى الصباح وهو جاي لا يستطيع ان ياتي الى الصباح تؤذن له وهو لم يأكل ولم يشرب وحياه الفقر كل سنه هناك ترميناشن في بولور فصلوا او الخدمه بسبب العمر او كذلك هو يكون في صف من الفقراء والمساكين وايضا الحلول لهؤلاء الناس هل هل الاسلام الذي هو الاغلب ولا شيء كان في الديسكاب اوف ذيس بيبول اي دونت نو هاو تو سيت Big problem, which is of the multi dimensions. It's a poor country who build mosques, who go on Hajj and Umrah many times. I give for Hajj and Umrah Abdullah bin Mubarak. The story of Abdullah bin Mubarak, one of the Al-Azizah of Allah, and Tabi'in, Tabi'in, Tabi'in. He was going to make Hajj, like most of us make Hajj. And you saw a woman picking up a dead chicken. From the garbage. He said, Yeah, woman, you eating my cup? He said, Sir, leave me alone. You don't know how I'm living. Leave me alone. Go away. You don't know how we live to talk about my cup or not my cup. He was shocked and he decided not to go for Hajj and donated the money for the woman. Then he went back to his village or his town. And he was hiding himself in the house and everybody came back from Hajj. They have been mentioned in all the books. And when people came from Mecca and Medina, they came to visit him. He said, oh, Mawlana, I've seen you with us making Hajj and Umrah. Allah has been narrated, Allah sent an angel on his face, look like him, to make on his behalf. Because he prioritized the need of the woman, to the need of his hajj, because he has made hajj many times, umrah many times. I can give it to a, a, somebody who wants to get married, or somebody who wants to get scholarship, or somebody actually uh, uh, sick, whatever it is. This is the change of the mindset, and that's to go from our ulama. Hajj is a far once in a lifetime. The rest could be given to it's not it's to, to, to the poor people. It's not, uh, uh, what do you call it? It's not a tourist visit. It's not something that, yeah, oh, yeah, I have made 50 hajj. So what? This 50 hajj, if I could have given the money to 50 families, or 100 families, or 500 families, to empower them far more better than going to hajj in their world. It's number one. Number two, if we talk about the people who are poor in this country, yes, they need the help. But we need to balance between giving the hand out and empowering them. And the skills education, and the invest in the education, and the vocational education, and farming, and livestock. That's what we need to balance between the hand out, which is the easiest, and to empower these people and build the capacity. Do we have to do it? Because empowering people, building the capacity, is a necessity. It has to be done. And you can go to the livelihood program. Uh, what you call income generation program. We started this year? Uh, we do mainly uh, irrigation systems. Oh. Well, irrigation system for the farm. But you have not started the livelihood yet. Livelihood, when you actually sponsor a family, <coughs> give them a cow, they, or, or you know it's better than message, but you need to follow up with them, you need to train them to be able to see that they are producing what we say. It must be done on this issue, not only giving the food like we give it every year. And he's talking about the big problem, the old people when they become pensioners, what to do with them? They become bigger. And this is a solution for you to have this kind of income 
or this kind of sponsorship or this kind of scheme to the pensioner or to give him subsidy for the living or whatever it is you see it's right for your country. I think we're going to close the session there, if you don't mind. No, I, I, I don't mind. I, I'm with you till People are free. You have hired me till fashion. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can I call a quick one, Makulba, if you can have some closing remarks, please, before we wind up? Makulba, Makul did not speak. It's it's very strange. You have to speak, say something. <coughs> Uh, there's some snacks, uh, as we said earlier, 